Phil here from Amnathly Tank, and today I'm going to show you how I painted the Sons of Horus Tactical Space Marine for the Horus Heresy by Games Workshop. Let's get started. The armor starts off with a layer of Arfin Jade by Scale 75 over a black undercoat. It took me two or three layers to get a nice even coverage of the black undercoat, but you want to make sure you have a nice, vibrant, and even coverage of your green. Next, I highlighted the armor with Surfer Orc Flesh, also by Scale 75. This was done through an airbrush. I'm looking to get a pretty general highlight across all the spots of the armor that the light would naturally hit. So things like the tops of the shoulder pads, the tops of the knees, and the highest points in the legs. The final highlight is done with a mix of about two parts Pale Skin by Scale 75 and three parts Surfer Orc Flesh. I like using flesh tones for my highlight here because it gives a warmer and less pastel look than if you used white instead. This highlight is applied fairly sparingly and really only at the center or the highest points of where the Surfer Orc Flesh was applied previously. Next, I apply a layer of gloss varnish over the entire model to prepare it for the decals and oil step coming up next. I applied decals fairly early on in the painting process for these models. This is because I want to do them underneath the weathering and chipping layer, so it looks like the decals are truly painted on and have weathered along with the rest of the armor, as opposed to sitting on top and are fresh and new while the armor is dingy and beat up. I also use a little bit of microsol at this point, to make sure the decals soften up and lay flat in the model. Next, I start the weathering process by using the sponge chipping method to add some scratches and texture to the model. I do a couple layers of sponge chipping here, starting with Rhinox Hide to get some brown chips, and going up through the various greens I airbrushed on the armor to represent slight scratches and dings that haven't gone all the way through the armor but would still reflect light. Finally, I do a very light sponge chip of Thrash Metal by Scale 75 at the very edges to represent places that the armor is worn all the way through to the underlying metal. Not only does the sponge chipping provide some visual interest and make the model look pretty beat up, but it also highlights the edges of the armor and removes the need to have to do tedious edge highlighting. Next, I paint all the parts I want silver with a base coat of thrash metal. Because I'll be doing an oil wash in the next step, by painting these parts silver now, I won't have to worry about shading them separately from the rest of the armor, as the oil wash will take care of that. For the next step, I use a black oil wash to quickly and easily provide some black shading and panel lining to the model, which adds some visual interest without a ton of work. To start with, I mix up an oil wash with lamp black oil paint by Windsor & Newton and some odorous mineral spirits. This wash is then applied liberally over the entire model, making sure to get it into all the cracks and crevices and everywhere the armor panels meet. Because we'll be wiping off the oil in the next step, it's okay here if it's a little messy and you get some overspill in places you don't want it to be. Once the oil wash is dry, it has a more matte look as opposed to the glossy look it has when it's wet, I come in and wipe away the excess oil with a makeup remover. I prefer using these foam sponges as opposed to Q-tips because these will not leave any fibers or strings in the model. And I've had some really bad luck in the past with a Q-tip that I leave a bunch of cotton strands that just get stuck to the model and never come off. Also, if there's any spots you want to really remove all the oil paint from, you can dip the foam makeup remover into some white spirits and use that to wipe away all of the oil on the model. As I'm going to do an enamel wash next, I apply another layer of gloss varnish to this model to lock in this oil layer and to ensure I don't accidentally wipe off the black oil paints when I use the enamel paint. I wanted to add a little more dirt and grime to this model, so I used Streaking Grime by AKA Interactive and put a few small dots of this around the model in various spots where dirt and grime might collect, such as around the knees or in the crevices of the armor. Once the Streaking Grime is dry, I use a brush moistened with mineral spirits to wipe away the streaking grime. One of the really cool things with streaking grime is that, well, as the name suggests, it will leave streaks when you go to remove it using this method. So make sure your brush strokes are in a downward direction in the same way you want your streaks to go. I then apply a layer of matte varnish 
to lock in the streaking grime and to remove any of the shine from the previous gloss varnish steps. Because the previous matte varnish step dulled down all of the metallics, I go back in and re-highlight all of my metallic areas with thrash metal again to bring back the shine and to brighten them up. The casing on the bolt gun is first painted flat black by scale 75, and then edge highlighted with anthracite gray, also by scale 75. The silver parts are then painted with thrash metal and given a wash of a mix of 50-50 Jirichi Violet and Non Oil by Games Workshop. The eyes are first painted with a layer of Speed Metal by Scale 75, and then washed with a layer of Camburn Crimson by Games Workshop. This method of doing the eyes is quickly becoming one of my favorite because it's very quick but still looks pretty good. I paint the rims of the shoulder pads with Flat Black by Scale 75, and then I also highlight them with a mixture of Flat Black and Anthracite Gray. This is a pretty subtle highlight and doesn't really look that interesting, but does add just a little bit of color variation, so I think it's worth it. Finally, I add some Burning Sands Weathering Powder from Secret Weapon Miniatures around the lower legs and the feet to tie the model into the base. The last step, as always, is to paint the base from black. And there you have it, the finished Sons of Horus Tactical Marine ready to fight for the Warmaster and bring down Terra. If you liked this tutorial or found it useful, please don't forget to like and subscribe, as it really helps the channel out. Also, if you have any questions or comments on this paint scheme, or any other paint schemes I've done, please leave a comment below. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.